Good morning, everybody. So my name is Hamid Tizouch uh, from Kimia Lab at the University of Waterloo. Today, uh, I would like to talk to you about KimiaNet, uh, how to train our histopathology deep network from scratch. So the, one of the main um, goals of the computer vision and AI community in uh, collaboration with uh, the pathology community is at the moment to uh, design and develop techniques to learn to represent tissue, which is probably the most difficult thing. It's the most difficult task in uh, uh, computational pathology in a modern sense. So we know that based on the textbooks, we have different type of uh, uh, tissue types, epithelial, connective, nervous, muscle. But we also know that we have many different diseases, carcinomas, inflammations, infections, and so on. The challenge is the diversity and variety of this, uh, that many of them are pleomorphic, they have mitosis, and uh, all that, the manifestation in body parts, different sites will be appearing differently when you look through the microscope or a digital scanner. So that's what we call in computer science NP hardness, so, uh, which, is, which, is a, which is a fancy word for saying that's basically impossible. You cannot do this. You cannot represent all type of tissues uh, in, in a computer because this is just unbelievably large number of possible uh, combinations and uh, variety of tissue. Well, uh, that goes uh, back to the discussion between shallow and deep networks because uh, if you have an artificial neuron, which is here in, the, in the circles that you see, on the right, uh, and every artificial neuron is basically a simple processing unit with some in and outputs. Uh, and shallow networks usually have a few layers of those neurons. That the green rectangles that you uh, you see is one layer. So the first layer has three, the second layer has four, and the last layer has two processing unit or artificial neurons. And deep networks have a lot of those layers and neurons, and shallow networks have only a few, generally three, four layers. Uh, and up to uh, 2006, 2007, we didn't think that's possible to really go deep. And since 2011, 12, we know that we can go deep, which is we can train circuits, networks, or uh, artificial neural networks that are consisting of many, many, many layers. And the problem for that fancy word from computer science, NP hardness, the impossibility of learning tissue variations, is the magic for that solution is in the depth of this type of network. So we have to go deep to be able to uh, learn something sophisticated, something complicated that combinatorially, theoretically, may not even be possible. So uh, to do that, you need a lot of data because we don't have a model. We don't have a set of equations. There is no mathematics for that. So that's uh, fundamentally empirical. So the, the software that we design and we call it deep networks is basically learning from a set of data, from the data of the past. The data of the past is the experience, is the knowledge embodied in images and reports and notes and labels and annotations and delineations and so on. So one of the uh, largest, probably the largest public data set is the uh, TCGA data set available through the GDC uh, portal. So it contains more than 30,000 whole slide images, uh, uh, both frozen sections and uh, FFPE specimens. And above 11,000 of them are available for training and testing. So they are HND sections. Uh, that uh, uh, are diagnostic, so have good value, uh, good to quality, so it can be used for, for training purposes. So that's from 25 different primary sites and 32 cancer subtypes. That, that's, a, that's a decent data, data set, in spite of all shortcomings, all problems that the literature has talked about the TCGA. At the moment, we don't have anything better as a community. We don't have anything better in terms of publicly available. There are institutions that have larger, cleaner, better, but they are not publicly available. So uh, how, how to do that? So the, then we need other ones, other data sets that are easy and manageable. So TCA is not easily manageable. So for example, there is the colorectal cancer data set was introduced four years ago. 
5,000 images, eight different classes like uh, tumor epithelium, stroma, complex stroma, background pixels, debris, adipose tissue, and so on. So 625 small patches or images in each class. The images are 150 by 150 pixels, which is a trend in literature, uh, in public data set. People keep the size of the images small to make it manageable, but it has the downside that then it may not be representative for the practice of histopathology. Other data set is the, that was used in the study is the endometrium data set. Uh, it, it was used to, uh, introduced uh, almost a year ago to compare deep learning techniques against the experienced pathologist. Uh, uh, and uh, so three, more than 3,000 patches of size 600 by 400 pixel. So okay, that's, a, that's, a, that's an okay size. Uh, 20 times or 10 times magnification whole slide images, so, but they are, the patches have been extracted. And there are four classes of endometrial tissue, which is normal, uh, uh, hyperplasia, adenocarcinoma, and so on. So that, that's something that was also used for, for testing. But the training, validation, and uh, testing of the actual network, the ChemioNet, was done based on TCGA, because TCGA is, again, the largest, has the whole slide images, and you can play with it. You can uh, uh, some of them, the quality on the white, you see that the, on the top one, we have high quality images and the uh, bottom one, we have rather low quality. So that's the downside of the TCGA. But I would say that's also the, the reality of the practice that when you go in a hospital, not all images may be of high quality. So the question is, do we want to use all of them or get rid of them? So we used uh, after, for example, eliminating uh, slides that had uh, no uh, complete pyramid in terms of magnification, we, we were left with uh, more than 8,000 whole slide images, and we used uh, 7,000 for training, 7,000 whole slide images for training, 741 for validating, and 744 WSIs for testing. So, for example, we used the, the ones uh, the, the cases that the patient had only one or two uh, whole slide images, we used them intentionally for, uh, for testing because we wanted to use as much as data for training. So we extracted the uh, patches at 20x of size 500 by 500 microns. So that gave us roughly uh, 1,200,000 patches for training, 121,000 patches for validation, and 116,000 something patches for testing and all that being at 20x images being size 1000 by 1000 pixels roughly that that's it that's the decent size of things to be done compared to the overwhelming part of literature which works with really tiny images so the problem was and is that if, if you look at a publicly available data set like uh, tcg8 the data is unlabeled so when i look at the lobular carcinoma or the adenocarcinoma i have the site i have the primary diagnosis but I don't know where exactly should I look as a computer. I don't know where, where is the carcinoma. So the data is not delineated. So in that sense, the data cannot be used for any type of supervised learning. So uh, what we did, we used the Utixel search, which is takes the WSI, patch them uh, at 20x magnification, use the staining information, the color information, to uh, uh, calculate color histograms, and then cluster them with unsupervised techniques, simple or good old-fashioned techniques like k-means. Then uh, you know what, what patches are similar to what patches. And then you group them in clusters and, it's a, and find, uh, find a mosaic to extract features. So when we do that, so there is a lot of details to that, which we don't have time to go. The paper, your pixel and image search engine for large archives of histopathology whole slide images is publicly available. Uh, you can download it, it's open access, and the details are in there. So the, the main thing is when you get the WSI, the, uh, the Utixel search engine finds uh, a representative number of patches and then assembles the mosaic on the right, which is a selection of the patches at high magnification that represent the whole slide image, because we cannot process the entire uh, also, one could say, why not take everything? Well, because we are thinking about the pathology office, and then there could be a workstation there. there, there could be no GPU power there, and so on. We have to make it feasible, practical, so we have to make it smart, such that 
uh, is, is not necessary to process the entire WSI. Then we had to extend UTXL because that was not good enough to use the unlabeled, not delineated TCGA data set. So we, we went back to the cellularity, which is a popular thing to do for different purposes. And if you look at these three cases, so and we segment uh, the cell nuclei, it doesn't need to be exact here. We are not really looking at any morphological features or exact counting. We just need, we just need an idea how cellular is the patch that I'm looking at. And the examples that we see are 13%, 41% for glioblastoma, GBM in the middle, 61%, and so on. So we, we get a quantification. Again, this quantification is not for the expert. It doesn't need to be accurate, super accurate. It's just for the computer to figure out that I'm dealing with a hypercellular or a hypocellular region. So that's a very important information to have. Now we can extend the utixel and say, okay, now I want a cellular mosaic. I want a cellular, I want a selection representation of the whole slide image. And I get that through technologies like utixel. And that's the mosaic that we take at the representation of the specimen. And we take that and further compress that or reduce the dimensionality by looking at the cellularity. Of course, this will have ramifications down the road. Does it mean that you're specialized on cellularity? How many things are uh, important? When I look at the cellularity, I may be missing some conditions and some uh, abnormalities. We, we can talk about that. But the question is, with this assumption, can I, can I train a network that understands uh, tissue? So uh, when we, we had to change the structure of that Utixel uh, search engine, so we again we were working uh, indexing at magnification 20x, and uh, we uh, clustered we applied unsupervised techniques at, at 5x magnification to look at just the information the staining to to group the tissue just based on the staining, and then the patches were 1,000 by 1,000 pixels. And the algorithm assumed that there are nine tissue types in each image. Those tissue types may or may not have pathological meanings, but we don't see them. They are not meant for the pathologist. And many uh, clusters may be redundant. So you may be, if you look at them, you may want to uh, merge some of them. It's, it doesn't matter. As long as we do not miss something, uh, having redundant information is not end of the world. And then we grab 15% of the tissue. So uh, that, that's a major thing to do. So we, we grab 15% of the entire specimen as a sample. And to, again, that's a major assumption that with 15% I'm grabbing whatever is needed to understand the tissue. When I look at the cellularity, I look at the top 20% uh, hypercellular uh, tissue samples. When I calculate the cellularity and sort them, I look at the top 20% to, uh, to be selected among the 15% of the specimen. So all the numbers that one can play with, uh, but it seems uh, that, uh, as we will show, that, uh, the, it may not directly and Im immensely impact uh, uh, performance. Then you will go ahead and patch the whole slide image. You apply your unsupervised uh, technique like k-means clustering. You basically group the patches together, you categorize them, and you get the mosaic, and then you look at the hypercellularity, you reduce the size of that mosaic, just look at the ones with uh, the top 20% cellularity, which may be very different for different size, and then you push that into a network uh, to get features. So, and that's the final representation. So you have deep features, which are just some numbers that a artificial neural network generates for the patches that you have selected as the representative of the whole slide image. So why DenseNet? So we use DenseNet, which is established uh, topology in the literature. It has been quite reliable for representing histopathology images uh, uh, and uh, is highly popular. There are many papers that use uh, DenseNet, DenseNet topology. And uh, we have some experience with it. So uh, you start with what you understand and what you know, uh, how it behaves. And compared to the top 10 networks in literature that use the so-called ImageNet, which is a, a non-medical uh, natural uh, set of images, that's that is very compact. So compared, for example, to the efficient net, uh, EfficientNet has 66 million parameters and uh, fixed ResNet has more than 800 million parameters. Uh, Destin has barely 7 million. So 
which is a, which makes it a very small network, which again, having in mind that we want to deploy solutions in the office of pathologists, we want to keep things small. And not just uh, from the efficiency perspective, also from the perspective of, uh, uh, also from the perspective of uh, being able to generalize, we want to keep things small. So we, valid, we trained and validated the solution. It took, of course, several weeks, uh, um, uh, almost two months to be accurate, uh, all the experiments that we run to train and validate. There was a huge gap between training and um, uh, validation, uh, which uh, um, theoretically is a sign of overfitting, but the test showed that is not the case. And that's one of the challenges that we have at the moment because we don't have really large Im uh, data sets of histopathology images. So we, 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 we showed the different settings that we, uh, we retrained uh, the uh, dense net topology at different levels, uh, uh, fully or just part of it, and that's the result. So the best was, of course, if it was trained from scratch, everything was touched and everything was relearned, uh, uh, then we had the best uh, result. So then we applied some search to say, okay, if I have a query image and I look at the primary diagnosis, and you, I look at the top three cases. Can you find? Can you can you show me top five, top six cases? Can you show that uh, 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 the search can uh, be successful if I'm using that representation? And another example for ovarian. So again, I look at the top six cases, and I see that the majority of them are have the correct primary diagnosis as the Cori WSI. Then we went and did horizontal search, which is, okay, I, I assume I don't know what is the primary side of the WSI, and then you search for it, and the question is in how many cases you can find the right primary site. has no practical implication, but is just a sanity check for the network. Is the, if the network has learned the tissue, it should be able to distinguish brain from pulmonary, prostate from liver. So, uh, w which may not be easily possible at high magnification, but, but if you get really too close and you have a small field of view, but that, that's a sanity check for us. And you see that dense net is generally very low compared to chemionet, chemionet one, two, three, four, which are different levels of training and adjustment. And the difference is that you see that on average, 44% of the increase in accuracy when we use chemonet, which is no wonder. Of course, the literature will tell us, of course, if you fine tune, if you retrain, you get better and better and better, of course. Then we did vertical search and there, there, now we are after primary diagnosis and I know that's brain, but tell me, is it low grade glioma or is it glioblastoma and so on. And then we also again saw that uh, chemionet was much better than dense net. Again, no wonder, but when you do it, you see it and you have the empirical evidence. Interesting was cases like melanocystic and pulmonary case here that previously we had zero because we had a very small number of test cases, four uh, and five respectively. And then when we use chemionet, even for the few, we can get decent results. So that's, that's the power of generalization, that when you learn to represent tissue, you are capable of uh, 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 being able to even uh, look at and recognize what it is, even if you don't have enough samples. When we visualize dense net, we see a mishmash of the 30-something uh, uh, primary diagnosis that we uh, uh, classified. Just, just put it out there to see uh, how accurately you can separate them. And of course, when we go from dense net to chemionet, and suddenly, of course, things get really well separated and you can distinguish them. And of course, that's one of the ways that to visually verify that you have been able to generalize the training has had some impact on the data. So we also tested that on the endometrium data set, which is just patches, no WSI, and we took the representation and we use classifier like SVM to classify that. And again, we look at the literature. We also um, compare to a, a fine-tuned VGG, which has also been used with more than 800,000 human annotated histopathology patches of seven, uh, uh, 74 uh, 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 different lesional and non-lesional tissue types. Uh, a, almost a year ago. We also compared that, so that's not just uh, general networks, also another network that has been also trained with histopathology images, also publicly available. And ChemioNet was, again, doesn't matter in what configuration, was much better than DenseNet in any 
other uh, uh, solution. We also look at the colorectal cancer uh, data set, uh, and we saw here, for example, that the benchmark is 97%. The chemionet representation combined with the classifier could bring to 96.8% which is, again, so shows that if you customize, you can get better and better, but the claim of the chemionet is to be a good representation for histopathology images, not a classifier. So why, why chemionet as a representation solution? We want to exploit a diverse multi-organ public repositories like TCGA, and we want to work at high magnification, uh, 20x, uh, if possible, higher, and we extracted large patches in, in contrast to the majority of literature, which uses really tiny images. So we work at 1,000 by 1,000 pixels, and we trained and tested with 1,000 by 1,000 pixels at 20x. And so we trained a densely connected topology with weak labels, because we didn't know really what part of the images, uh, uh, what, what the pathologist has written the primary diagnosis for. So Chemionet is supposed to be a feature extractor. It's not supposed to be a classifier. And the high cellularity mosaic that we created crucially facilitated the training of such networks. But the uh, work of future have to show for what type of uh, representation chemionet features would be, uh, uh, would be suitable. So a paper will come out soon that describes the details of the Chemionet and the Chemionet network will be available publicly on the websites of the Chemionet, of the Chemio Lab for, for the research and educational purposes to be used. Thank you very much. I appreciate your attention.